the uh, playback device to make sure that the audio is working well. Again, all these are uh, articles that I'm going to be reading from are in the description box below on this video and in the recaps on YouTube side. So please do subscribe, turn on the bell notifications. And let's go right on into it on the first piece of news. But first, before that, we're going to read some market data. We got the U.S. market data. We have the Dow Jones Industrial, Dow Jones Industri Dow Jones Industrial Average. Down 0.76%. The NASDAQ Composite Index is down 0.96%. The S&P 500 is down 0.76%. The Global Dow Real Time is down 1.1%. The Gold Continuous Contract is up 1.45%. Crude Oil is up 1.25%. So yeah, on the markets, uh, specifically to the U.S. market data, yeah, down, Dow, down 076 In Europe... The FTSE 100 down point uh, down 1.07. The DAX down 1.72 percent. The CAC 40 down 1.86 percent. FTSE MIB down 1.7 uh, 1.75 percent. The IBEX 35 down 1.57 percent. The stock 600 down 1.55. In the Asia market data, with the Asia Dow down 0.88 percent. The Nikkei 225 down 1.44. Hang Seng down point. One two Shanghai Composite is up 0.49. S and P B S C Sensex is down 0.31. F T S C Straits Times Index is down 0.41. S and P A S X 200 Benchmark is up 0.57. A Cospeak Index, a Composite Index is up 0.51 percent. In currencies, forex, we've got the euro up 0.33 percent. The Japanese yen down 0.40 percent. British pound up 0.35%, Australia dollar down 0.43%, the US dollar index is down 0.29%, the WSJ dollar index is down point uh down 0.15%. In cryptocurrency markets, we have Bitcoin BTC up 1.34%, Ethereum up 1.85%. On the rates market, the US 10 year up 0.023, Germany 10 year up 0.039, Italy 10 year up 0.038, Spain 10 year up 0, uh, 0.068 point, UK UK uh, UK 10 year gilt down 0.037, Japan 10 year government bond is down 0.018. On the futures market, the crude oil up 1.23 percent, gold continuous contract is up 1.46 percent, E mini Nasdaq 100. Down 0.99%. E mini Dow continuous contract is down 0.69%. E mini SP 500 future contract is down 0.71%. And silver continuous contract is up 1.56%. Yeah, we got the gold here up 1.46%. $1,934.90 per troy ounce of gold. Are we still measuring a troy ounce? We should. Anyways, going to the first piece of news I have here to read from. From Coindesk, Circle Ventures back $4 million round for blockchain-based debt provider Obligates. This is from writer Brandy Betts. The startup formerly known as FQX lets companies raise money through debt securities. Obligate, a startup offering blockchain-based regulated debt securities, announced a $4 million seed extension round. Before I read this, um, if you're on the YouTube side, you can go ahead and use the chat and uh, throw your chats in there. Let me know what you are tracking, what kind of questions you have or what you feel is important in uh, crypto, blockchain, NFT, metaverse, in general finance, or global news. And I'll, we'll research it together, all right? Or any questions you got, you can have it featured right here up on the chat on the Jumbotron. The funds will help the firm, which was formerly known as FQX, scale its debt platform that is set to go live next month on the Poly Polygon blockchain. <clears throat> Blockchain Ventures and Circle Ventures participated in an extension, joining initial seed investors Early Bird and SIX Fintech Ventures, combined with initial fundraise, uh, with its initial fundraise in late 2021. Obligate's seed round now totals more than $8.5 million. Oh, what happened there? Switzerland-based Obligate essentially allows companies to issue on-chain bonds in commercial paper or debt securities that define the terms of a loan to receive funding from investors in a regulated decentralized finance DeFi environment. Alternate, alternate routes of fundraising could become more popular as venture capital firms and traditional finance trade five investors take a more cautious approach after the collapse of multi-billion dollar centralized crypto exchange FTX. Uh, obviously, we have the proof of backing 
right? How much uh, cryptocurrency exchange really has proof of backing is important now. Obligate combines the benefits of DeFi with the trust and regulation of TradeFi. Obligate co-founder and CEO Benedict Sculpey uh, told... Uh, Shelby, I'm not sure. I uh, told CoinDesk in an email, Obligate is more efficient than any other bond platform we, as we allow a direct issuance of blockchain-based bonds from the issuer to the wallet of the investors. Issuers have to go through Know Your Customer KYC verifications before creating a bond program suited to their liquidity needs, which can be done with a few clicks. The, the liquidity will be denominated in stable coins such as USDC, but can be quickly converted to US dollars, explain uh, Benedict. Investors will be able to access Obligate through their existing crypto wallet. For each investment, the investor holds the respective note uh, or e-note ERC-20 token, which carries the right to receive payment or at maturity or collateral in the case of, of a default. I mean, obviously, it's not going to be an ERC-721 because then you're going to have like an NFT market <laughs> uh, bonds uh, trading on, on OpenSea or something like that unless they block that. But um, yeah, I get it. Being an ERC-20 uh, makes sense. All right, let's go into the next article here. It's from Reuters, Reuters, whatever it is, uh, U.S. to announce international cryptocurrency action statement. So representatives of the Ripple, Bl uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin virtual currencies are seen on a PC motherboard. Oh, let's, I'm just explaining the image here. Never mind. Uh, Washington. <laughs> The U.S. Justice Department will announce a major international cryptocurrency enforcement action on Wednesday. It said in a statement adding, adding the U.S. Treasury Department will also make an announcement. The U.S. Department of the Treasury will also announce an action in this space. The statement said U.S. officials, including Deputy U.S. Attorney General Lisa Monaco and Deputy U.S. Treasury Secretary Wally Adeyemo, will deliver remarks at 12 p.m. in Washington, according to the statement. Uh, their officials will include the Associate Deputy Director of FBI and the U.S. Attorney of the Eastern District of New York. Representatives of the Treasury declined for to comment further. So that's that there. A little bit of news there. And we'll keep reading. Going through the reading. All right, Yahoo Finance. Ethereum's name service governance proposal outlines intention to sell 10,000 Ethereum. Oliver Knight, uh, writer and reporter for Yahoo Finance. A, government, a governance proposal put forth by a member of the Ethereum's name service ENS DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization, suggests liqu liquidating 10,000 Ether uh, Ethereum to cover operating costs over the next two years. ENS is a decentralized name domain name protocol that recorded over 2.8 billion domain registrations in 2022. The draft proposal, which was submitted on January 18th, is now being discussed among the uh, ENS community. The DAO's treasury current holds 40,000 746 ETH and $2.46 million worth of USDC. The sale of 10,000 ETH would generate a minimum of $13 million of in USDC stablecoin via Gnosis auction. Since the launch of ENS in November 2021, the price of Ether has slumped by 68% from 4800 to 1500 $26 per ETH, while ENS generates protocol revenue in ETH, having so much exposure to a single volatile asset places the DAO at a vulnerable position, the proposal stated. The value of the ENS token has been has seen a resurgence since the uh, turn of the year, rising from $10.73 to $13.38. Uh, you can put your comments there on the Yahoo Finance side of what your thoughts are on this for Ethereum name services, governance proposal outlines intention to sell 10,000 ETH. They want to liquidate it out and fund themselves for the next two years. Um, that's like, to me, kind of sounds a little speculative that Ethereum and Bitcoin are going to go much lower, which, uh, hmm, yeah, that's always possible. Um, but even then, like on the rebound, is it worth to liquidate 10,000 ETH or to me liquidate now and they're going to buy back <laughs> at the true low of Bitcoin moving forward here in Q1 or this great recession we're supposed to be having moving forward. Anyways, uh, CoinDesk, Web3, Yugo Labs, Sewer Pass NFT collection sets over $6 million in sales in just hours. So the first piece of news here, we had some blockchain tech news, some cryptocurrency news. Um, now we're going to some NFT news and some metaverse news, tech news, finance news, and general news close out the stream for the day. The latest NFT project by Board Ape Yacht Club parent company Yugo Labs grants holders to access, a, uh, access to a skill-based game called Dookie Dash. Uh, this is from Rosie Perper, writer, reporter for... Um, Coindesk, after announcing the release of a new non-fungible token NFT project within the Board Ape Yacht Club ecosystem, Yuga Labs released its sewer passage for minting on Wednesday, yielding over 4,000 ETH, over $6 million in total sales volume within hours of release. 
holders of a board ape yacht club basie or mutant uh yacht club basie nft were eligible to claim a free sewer pass on wednesday which acts as the key to playing a skill-based game called dookie dash these those holding a sewer pass whether minted or purchased on the secondary marketplace can play dookie dash from november 19th to february 8th scores accumulated from gameplay will be part of a broader narrative experience called chapter one at a later date the sewer passes were broken up into four tiers Based on whether the holder of a Basie or Macy NFT also holds a Board Ape Kennel Club NFT in their wallet at the time of writing, the floor price for a Tier 1 sewer pass on secondary NFT marketplace OpenSea stood at 1.3 ETH, about well, $1,970 USD, while Tier 4 passes were listed uh, for up to 420 ETH, about $640,000 per pass. Uh, Board Ape Yacht Club tweeted that the official sewer pass collection was listed for secondary resale on OpenSea. Notably, the sewer passes had Certain conditions coded in a smart contract, including a block list of certain wallet addresses, which sparked conversation on Twitter around the move. Some of the addresses blocked be, uh, blocked along uh, belong to other major secondary marketplaces like LooksRare and NFTX. So, I mean, maybe there's some certain, I uh, wonder why that is. They probably want it in the hands of like actual real people and holders rather than, you know, um, marketplaces themselves or, or DAOs or whatever it may be. Um, holders of many ho you need a bull run again you missed those yeah yeah the bull run maybe um maybe two to three years out <laughs> i don't know i hear maybe possibly like we'll see some mini bull runs here and there like we saw this past you know 16k to 21k btc but i don't know i'm still calling some people are calling a uh, 13k low 10k low on btc here in q1 um we'll only have to see in this recession but i say uh if you're talking about like you know bull run again to bitcoin at 100k uh you know I'm speculating two to three years, right? So I'm not thinking of anything like NFT, crypto, what's the value kind of based until I see Bitcoin like 100K. Ever thinking of selling uh, before, uh, like that. Uh, per OpenSea's developer guide, OpenSea supports on-chain enforcement of creator fees if you want to enable them for your new project. The way this works is by adding a simple code snippet to NFT contracts that restricts NFT sales of your project to only marketplaces that enforce creator fees. Um, oh, this is this is this is a little bit more on creator fees, but um, yeah. So it's explaining this. Looks rare. One of the platforms apparently blocked by the move opted to make royalties optional in October. Several other major pl uh, platforms, including X2Y2, have also opted for this structure as part of larger movement by platforms to court sellers looking to get the best deal for the NFT purchase. Meanwhile, creators have pushed back against the shift, saying it that it hurts their ability to make an ongoing profit from their artistic uh, creations. To me, uh, for me. You hope you hope so, yeah, yeah. We all hope so, most definitely. Ho. Um, so for me, uh, I've been utilizing OpenSea since uh, late, you know, well, basically, yeah, twenty seven, late twenty seventeen, going into twenty eighteen, and um, it was twenty, yeah, basically twenty eighteen. Started utilizing OpenSea. Uh, met the founders here and there briefly. Was able to actually talk with them directly via emails. Uh, it was very easy early on, and all there was was really like like uh, Crypto Kitty and Crypto Punk. Uh, did not buy any crypto punks uh though if i remember them yuga labs co-founder wiley arano aka gordon goner has been outspoken about protecting creator royalties noting in november that the company was looking into using allow list coded into smart contracts to determine which wallet addresses could transfer nfts he noted that externally owned accounts or eoas are a type of uh, crypto wallet not used by marketplaces making it easier for different uh different to differentiate Trades between private users and marketplaces coding something like this into your NFT smart contract will make it so that creators can make sure they collect their royalties, he wrote. <clears throat> so, yeah, it's important. So, yeah, it's crazy. Tier 4 pass is going for 600k. Great job. Keep it up. Hey, man, I appreciate your kind words like that. Yeah, I I typically uh, was doing this news like every day. I just decided to share this live stream uh, link in some places today. And it's been a bit since I've been able to do the streams based on works but i typically like to do this every day uh and the recaps on my youtube side are on blockchain tech and finance uh, playlist on the youtube side metaverse to bring out true productivity to industrial environments in davos convention in 2023 a panel of experts at the 2023 world economic forum highlighted how the metaverse could deliver practical use cases of uh, large-scale industrial uh, industries like healthcare and retail so we're basically shifting out of uh basically did a piece of blockchain news crypto news nft news and we're going to switch into metaverse news some stock finance news a piece of tech news and close out the stream for the day the metaverse continues to be a central 
talking point among leaders and decision makers in global industries for many the vision of the future of the metaverse is not limited to a gamified version of reality at the world economic forum wef 2023 in davos switzerland a panel of experts came together to discuss a global idea of an industrialized metaverse with echoes of the industrial revolution the industrialized metaverse will bring web3 technologies into industries that are uh, at play in everyday life so the big thing we're happening seeing happening here is that um metaverse landlords basically people who own land own buildings are basically renting things out um capitalizing off their <laughs> land plots uh, for events socials etc deployment of the industrial uh industrialized metaverse discussion started out with abdullah al uh al -Swaha, the minister of communications and information technology in saudi arabia expressing the current reality of digital engagement doesn't uh, that the current reality of digital engagement doesn't match up to its potential. The digital world that we live in today is not fit for purpose in the 21st century, said in quotes. Instead, it could be uh, in, and arguably will be better off leveling up with the current digital communications for situations such as telework. They continued in further quotes, I am a big advocate of the metaverse, that it's going to be uh, the next wave of how immersive experiences work for consumers, enterprises, and the industry. Peggy Johnson, the CEO of augmented reality company Magic Leap, said the industrial metaverse could only come into play when digital and physical worlds begin to merge. So further in quote, when it comes, uh, when it really comes to life and brings true productivity to these industrial uh, environments. So that's an advertisement. Yeah, that's that for that, right? Metaverse to bring true productivity to industrial environments. So, I mean, what could that mean? Um, a lot more money lying in the pockets of people who are innovating people uh large people who already have a lot of deep pockets uh to jump in and fund their um product launches etc to keep the machine gears rolling it's from uh, yahoo finances general um finance news then we're gonna go a piece of tech news to close out the stream 2023 investment narrative is already diverging from 2022 this is the morning brief from jared blickray bleak i don't know jared writer reporter for yahoo finance so this was a uh, appeared in the uh morning brief today on thirsty thursday today's newsletter newsletter by jared a reporter focused on yahoo markets and finance right you can follow him on twitter blah 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 i have all these links in the description box below on this video despite wednesday's losses in the major u.s indexes stocks are flying out of the gate in 2023 the nasdaq composite and S&P 500 are having their best start of year since 2019 and enjoying these gains in the new year. Stocks are diverging from the trends that emerged in the second half of 2022, a move that has important implications for investors. Start with the biggest year, uh, loser of the day, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which was down 1.81% or 614 points on Wednesday. It's worth showing in over a month. As of late December, the Dow had outperformed the NASDAQ by 20% uh, percentage points, the most since the dot-com bubble crash in two, de uh, two decades prior. Despite this outperformance, however, the Dow ended 2022 down nearly nine percent there are a few other places a few places for investors to hide in 2022 yeah we are most definitely in recession still and they're saying we're going to be going into a global uh further deeper recession and we're definitely in crypto winter but we're seeing some nfts uh pump right maybe you're on the hezbollah nft uh train today but wednesday the nasdaq outperformed the dow by 57 basis points particularly notable uh, notable coming on such a negative day for the market in the first 11 trading days of the year, the Nasdaq is already up 4.69% compared to the Dow's uh, meager up 0.45% gain. If we dive inside the benchmark S&P 500 and look at the relative sector performance, 2023's year-to-date sector chart is nearly the inverse of 2022. Here you got the S&P 500 sector ETFs. Last year's second, uh, last year's second worst outperforming sector in this year's best consumer discretionary XLY um how long this kind of article does uh, it's not too much left we can what is it bitcoin let's talk about this cryptocurrencies now some of the some of these pocket uh pockets of the markets have been exhibiting strength since last year under different leadership that could change um let's talk about this december retail sales surprised the downside with a drop of 1.1 percent which follows a similar negative print on november investors seem to be pricing in this objectively bad news for what it is instead of trying to play 40 chess with jay powell on the federal reserve uh, speaking of the fed the market's new favorite macro risk assets bitcoin btc and usd and ethereum eth to usd are each up 25 percent this year bitcoin and uh, crypto have been uh, particularly volatile around important fed decisions and inflation data leading uh, risk markets to the upside at times and downside at others so bottom line is bitcoin is a clear leader this year among the 
fringier parts of the markets and currently the direction up it's like it's like did they mean to use fringier or cringier it's like they just think bitcoin's like the cringiest thing in the world since uh stale sliced bread but really it is the best thing since sliced bread uh for a tech piece and as a store of value just my opinion though dyr do your own research if i could even like select everything let's go all right got some piece of tech news here climate change from the bbc climate change sector climate change invest in technology that removes co2 reports so this is also part of investing right um not financial advice do your own research but um investing in um certain techs and we're going to go through invest in technology that removes co2 sectors it's from Jonah Fisher, BBC Environment Correspondent. Technology to remove the planet warming greenhouses gas CO2 from our atmosphere must be urgently ramped up, leading climate experts say in a news in a new report. Yeah, pump their stocks up and their technology. Uh, okay, this is a short article. We're going to read through this. So scientists say big cuts in CO2 emissions won't be enough to limit global warming, and the nature alone will not remove enough of it from the air. CO2 is the most important gas warming the planet and is emitted when fossil fuels such as gas and oil are burnt. To limit warming to uh, 2 degrees Celsius or lower, we need to accelerate emissions reductions, but the findings of this report are clear. We also need to increase carbon removal too, says lead author Dr. Steve Smith from Oxford University. Many new methods are emerging with potential. There's consensus among scientists that the world is warming primarily because emissions of CO2 estimately at uh, estimated at 33 billion tons in 2021, far exceeded the amount that is being removed. This report suggests 2 billion tons a year. Until, emis uh, until emissions and removals are balanced, so-called net zero global temperatures are predicted to rise, but getting there won't be easy. The latest UN climate report says to fully achieve net zero, there will be need to be some CO2 removal, so-called negative emissions to compensate for sectors that can't easily decarbonize. Currently, almost all the world's CO2 removal occurs from the natural processes that primarily plants and trees take, uh, taking in CO2 from the air and the soil absorbing and storing it. But there are limits to how much nature can do, for example, how much more of the world can realistically be given uh, over forests. Some optimistic scenarios suggest that natural CO2 removal could be doubled by 2015, but that's still only about 4 billion tons of CO2 a year. So what are they saying? Uh, basically, the world's uh, coming to an end, right? Uh, everyone's, everything's going to flood. Uh, technological solutions. This is a new report titled, The State of Carbon Dioxide Removal Says to Restrict and Reduce Global Temperatures in the Future. There needs to be investment in developing technological solutions now. The method, it, the method that cites are all fairly new and at different stages of development and deployment put together. They currently only make up a tiny fraction of the world's CO2 removal. One known as BECCS involves incorporating CO2 capture into biomass-based electricity generation in which organic matter such as crops and wood pellets are burned to produce power. Other options include huge facilities where the carbon is extracted from the air before being stored in the ground. This use of uh, spe specially treated charcoal biochar that locks in carbon and enhanced rock weathering loosely based on the carbon removal that allows that occurs, sorry, occurs with natural erosion. The use of CO2 removal technologies is not without its critics. Some campaigners doubt that they can be cost-effective and fear that they can be an excuse to defer and delay the transition away from fossil fuel use. The report stresses that removing CO2 could not be seen as a silver bullet to tackle climate change, but that meeting the UN's climate goals will require technology as well as nature to reduce greenhouse, glass, uh, greenhouse gas levels. That all assumes that global CO2 emissions from burning fossil fuels will, as pledged at numerous climate summits, fall rapidly. So far, yearly emissions have yet to start a downward trend. Um, what I've been hearing is uh, a lot of the beef industry is a huge carbon uh, contributor. And to combat that, a lot of these um, beef producing farms, cattle farms, have actually new technologies they're putting in store that are actually negative now, negative carbon emitters. Uh, so they're taking more carbon out of the air. So basically taking all the carbon out of their air that's being released from their production facilities, processing facilities, whatnot, farm facilities. Um, and they're taking more out than they're producing in, from my understanding, through the use of technology. So what that technology is, I don't know. You have to look into those things. Maybe that technology sector company has a stock out there. And those sort of sector companies are innovating and 
needing to be utilized more often because of the state of the environment in the world, things going on. And so that helps this valuation of their corporation and their product overall and their stock value overall. Let's close this out for the day. NPR, the new morning news brief from today. Um, Steve Inskeep and A. Martinez. You got a 10 minute listen here you can re listen into. And in brief, the high stakes debt ceiling fight looms on Capitol Hill. The rules of handling classified documents in the tech industry facing one of the sharpest downturns in a decade turns to layoffs. So you can listen to the 10 minute listen. Um, you got the narrative outline right here in base words. And I'm just going to go through more stories from NPR. I'm going to close the stream for the day. The U.S. Supreme, uh, Supreme Court is unable to, to ID the leaker of Dobbs' decision. In politics, here's why a high-stakes debt ceiling fight looms on Capitol Hill. In politics, four ways around a debt ceiling crisis and why they might not work. In, uh, further in politics, a losing Republican candidate in NM, New Mexico, is charged over shootings at homes in, of Democrats. Or in, further in politics, uh, Rep. Representative Marjorie, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene is having a moment. Uh, what does that mean? Biden becomes the first sitting president to deliver a Sunday sermon at MLK's church. And popular in, uh, NPR is Alec Baldwin, Baldwin will be charged with involuntary manslaughter and rush shooting death. Uh, Ron Jeremy's accusers are disappointed. Uh, the former porn star won't go to trial. Army Lieutenant Pepper sprayed in Virginia's traffic stop receives $3,600 uh, in damages. Twitter auctioned off office supplies, including a pizza oven and neon bird sign. That's so random. New Zealand, what's the auction funds going to? That's what I wonder. New Zealand Prime Minister J uh, Jacinda Ardern plans to leave office. Business Bank of America says the problem with Zelle transactions is resolved. Tradition uh, of plunging in an icy river persists in Ukraine despite the war. Yep. Ice dipping. Always fun. Always good for your health. Do it safely, though. When her mother goes missing, Gen Z teen takes up a tense search on uh, screens. Health. Thinks settled a lawsuit over chemicals in his period underwear. Here's what to, here's what to know. National from housework to sex. Here's how relationship contracts can help couples. The U.S. faces unprecedented uncertainty regarding abortion law, legal scholar says. And book reviews. Brett Easton Ellis' first novel in more than a decade. The Shardies. The Shards, sorry. The Shards are worth the waits. That's what I've got. That's what's going on today. Right here on Blockchain Tech and Finance News. So please do subscribe, turn on bell notifications. I'm going to fix this uh, little thing up here. I'm going to make the subscribe a little bigger and Blockchain Tech and Finance. We'll fix it up. Anyways, have a great and safe day. I'll see you all back tomorrow on Friday. I don't do these streams on the weekends, but on Mondays, I do the weekend recaps for what was important going on in the weekends on Saturday and Sunday. Have a great and safe rest of your week. See you back tomorrow. Cheers. Ciao. Peace be with you. Onomashigasu.